Hi and welcome. I'm Lisa. Thanks so much for taking the time to join me on my YouTube channel or website for another card video. Today I'm sharing a fun technique using the positive and negative areas of a stencil and embossing powders to create some Thanksgiving cards. I guess you might call this a two for one. I do know you can mass produce several cards in a very short amount of time, which is perfect for the holiday season. I have a lot of samples as you can see here. And the main focus of this video is the technique. So I will be speeding up as we get towards the end of the video. I have a few stencils here that I'm using and I'm in love with this Gina K thick brush stencil for fall cards, really all cards, but I really like it for fall cards. I'm also using Pink and Main's Herringbone stencil and Honey Bee Stamps diamond pattern stencil. Now I'm using a WOW embossing ink pad and this is an ultra slow drying ink pad so it makes it perfect for this technique. And I'm gonna be using Gina K cardstock. You can use any cardstock you have on hand. The colors that I'm using, Tranquil, Prickly Pear, Edible Eggplant, Tomato Soup, and Fresh Asparagus, to me, are perfect for fall cards, Thanksgiving cards. So I'm going to be using a few other products also, but don't worry, they'll all be linked below for you, and you can find them on my website as well. So I've pre-cut all of my cardstock to four and a quarter by five and a half inch panels. I'm laying down some anti-static powder on two of those pre-cut panels, and I want to have two panels prepped because I'm going to be working with two off of the same stencil. Okay, so I laid my stencil down over my panel and now I'm going to just hold the stencil in place with my fingers. If you're not comfortable with that, by all means use tape or pixie spray to hold it. I'm going to take the ink pad and just kind of press that down into the stencil until I have the cardstock covered. And once I'm happy with that, I'm going, going to set the panel to the side and I'm then going to start working with my next panel. So we have a lot of ink left on that stencil and I want to use it. I'm going to grab a cutting plate from my Big Kick. You will need a die cutting machine for this. I lay down a piece of parchment paper and that's just to protect the plate and keep it clean. Stencil goes down, ink side up, paper goes down, powdered side down, add an embossing pad, another cutting plate, run it through your machine, and wow, well, now we have our positive and negative of our stencil. So with a clean piece of paper underneath there, I'm going to go ahead and add the embossing powder. I'm using WOW metallic brass embossing powder with this uh, these two panels. And I used a clean piece of paper so I can funnel that back into the jar. So now all I need to do is go ahead and heat set both of the panels. So a couple of things, always let your heat gun preheat before melting embossing powder. You'll have less warping with your paper and you'll just get better results overall. Uh, this technique is super easy and we all are always looking for a way to get the more out of our supplies. And I think this really does allow us to get more out of our ink pad, out of our stencils. And I really do love this technique. So I did try this technique with a brayer. And while it works, the results are not near the same as what you get with a die cutting machine for obvious reasons. So I'm loving me some uh, WOW embossing powders. This metallic brass is absolutely gorgeous on this edible eggplant and tranquil cardstock. It's so pretty. It has a great fall vibe to it. So I decided to hop over to the WOW website and check out check it out. Now, most of the time when I buy my embossing powders, I just throw them in the cart uh, when I'm buying from other places like small businesses or even scrapbook.com. But today I decided, you know what, I'm going to go over to the WOW website and check it out. And I'm glad I did because I found out some interesting information while I was over there. Um, their powders are double treated for static. I did not know that. They also recommend that you store the powder in its original jar because the jars are treated. Hmm. The oils from your fingers, um, when you touch your cardstock, that could cause your embossing powder to stick to the cardstock. 
which makes sense. So they recommend that you hold it from the sides. Um, there's grades. It's regular, super fine, which is my favorite, and then ultra high. And they also have properties, translucent, opaque, marbling, and mixture. I just thought that was really cool. So while I was over there making an order, I just kind of nosed around a little bit and found that. Okay, so now we're just going to go ahead and add ink to these card panels and intensify the color of them. Once we add that ink down, we're going to wipe them off with a clean rag just to bring out that gorgeous embossing again. Now I'm going to run all of these panels through my die cut machine using the Neat and Tangled Maple Thanks die, I, with the exception of one. I do cut one out with a heart. I just wanted to see what it would look like, but we're going to use it, so no worries. I'm going to go ahead and start adding 3D mounting foam to the back of each panel. So I'm going to kind of be making this up as I'm moving along in the video. And uh, so don't worry, it's not too, too bad. But just so you have a heads up, this is kind of a fly by the seat of your pants thing. So I decided to do a shaker card here with this um this card and what I'm using is Hero Arts 3 inch by 4 and 3 quarter inch acetate sheet and I just trimmed it down to cover that leaf window. Now I'm using my ATG adhesive to um, adhere that acetate to the card but I'm also going to use this mounting foam to help hold it down. Plus it gives us the room between our card base and that panel for our sequins to uh, roll about. So I'm trying a new mounting foam and it's by Duck. And while I do believe that it's probably amazing for your home use, I don't find it to be um, user friendly in the craft room. The back is very sticky, which is great, except for it's so sticky, it gums up my scissors. And I'm having to take that release paper off of some of the tape and put on the back of what I'm cutting just to be able to cut it. So I'm not that crazy about it. I use my anti-static tool to run around that foam and just remove any stickiness before removing the backing off of it. Piled my sequins and seed beads in the center of my card base and just centered my card panel on top. Pressed down firmly around those edges so nothing could escape when it was shaken up and the shaker card's done. So I decided to do something a little bit different here. We have a die cut window and instead of doing a shaker card, I thought it would be kind of fun if I added some twine in that window and I really like the way this turned out. So we do get a bonus card because we have all of those leaves that we die cut out of the panels. So I wanna use those. And all I did was take and cut um, using nesting rectangle dies and 80 pound cardstock and went ahead and cut a thin frame. I cut a piece of acetate to cover that frame and adhered it using a liquid adhesive. So now I'm just going to go ahead and take foam strips and run all around the edge of it. Then I'm going to flip it over and arrange my leaves on the top. I'm going to adhere those down. I'm using my ATG adhesive, but I also use liquid adhesive. And then I trim the sides of that dam. Now I decided, like all good fly by the seat of your pants girls do, that I wanted the frame to be brown at this point. <laughs> so I grab my Copic markers and I color it. No big deal. All right, so once we have that colored, we're going to then visit two, not one, but two, sequin factories and rob them for all of these sequins that I'm using here because that's a lot of sequins. But I knew I wanted a lot in there to cover up a lot of the white. I love the way that this turned out. And uh, I did take one extra leaf and just fill that bottom in. So for the sentiment for the bonus card, I just took a piece of vellum, cut it down, heat embossed with gold embossing powder. Happy Thanksgiving there. And then I had a little bit of the fresh asparagus cardstock left over and I die cut a leaf. I use just foam circles to pop that up off the front of the card. Also, I stamped the sentiments from Casual Friday's Wheat Wreath Stamp Set, Love and Blessings in the center of the die cut windows like you see there. And um, then I did some sentiment strips on thank uh, that read on this Thanksgiving to add to the cards. 
I do go in and add some sequins to a few of the cards. Now this card here, I didn't like the way the sequins look. So I decided instead of fighting with it, I would just go ahead and make a faux shaker card right here and just load the sequins up in there. So that's what I did with that. Okay, so here's one last look at all of the cards. I absolutely love the eggplant, the edible eggplant cardstock by uh, Gina K. In fact, if you'll notice, my nail polish was inspired by the color of that cardstock. So here's the cards all done up, looking very pretty, I think. All right, so is this a technique that you've tried or is it a technique that you would try? Let me know in the comments below. And I believe that's it for us. We have reached the end of the video. And I just want you to know that I appreciate you taking the time to join me. And I hope that you were inspired enough to head into your crafty space. And if you could subscribe and hit that bell to be notified of new content to my channel, I would appreciate it. Hop over to my website where you can find blog posts and videos in one spot. As always, know how much I appreciate you taking your time to watch this video. And until next time, my crafty friends, keep crafting.